Hey guys, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft. Hunter's with me today, Leanne's working the camera, and we even got the Beagle Lucky out today. We're at York River State Park, and we're going to do a little hiking on some trails. Testing out some gear and some packs, getting ready for some adventure trips later on this year. Why don't you come on with us? To start off with, got some good fire trails built in here to get to the single track stuff. So far, nice and easy walking. Even though it's hot today, we're pushing 90 degrees and high humidity. So as you can see, we got some really good trail markers out here at York River State Park, so should keep us from getting lost today. We'll continue on. What you were just looking at was a site that's identified here on some of the trails where some farmhouses and such were and this describes the person that was here in the time that they occupied the house it shows some photographs of some remnants that were found there everything from pottery to some forged metal i never realized just how much history was out here at the york river state park if we didn't walk very far at all we found another settlement location that was marked by a placard and this was listed as the wheelwright's house and they put this wagon here as a display but they also have some signage talking about the different metal working tools that were found at this particular site so it's kind of neat to look at the history of the area around where you live and work turning out to be a pretty nice day humidity still up we're getting close to noon so it's getting hot we're going to continue on up this trail for a little way Hey guys, we just we came a little ways from where all the ti our tires are made, and we stumbled upon the blacksmith shop. Now the blacksmith shop was usually what a community was built around, because this would provide all of your tools and weapons. Um, so there's a couple of different things here: a couple of nails and slates. So. So, so far we've walked the bag 1.3 miles and we've gotten to the destination of the actual trail that we want to hike down. This is going to be a little bit more of a single track trail more than the fire road. So now we'll get into the real hiking. Bad day to be the bug. Good day to be the spider. So here is the reward at the end of the hike. We ended up in a, at an overlook where we're looking out over the York River. Now the York River comes off of the Chesapeake Bay and is a saltwater river at this point. It gets a little brackish about five or six miles up from here. But it's full of life with this saltwater marsh out here. We've already seen lots of snails and sand crabs or uh, small crabs. I'm not exactly sure that they're sand crabs. But uh, we've also seen some birds and some other signs of wildlife along the water's edge here also. Now there is a sign down here that talks a little bit about the Pamunkey Indians, some of the tools that they made, and talks about this was one of the main hunting grounds where they would come to both hunt and fish. And uh, I'm sure that gathering quite a bit of the shellfish from this area and crabs was a large part of that diet. So there's a shot of the crabs that we're dealing with. They're very small. They look like little hermit crabs. I'll see if I can focus in a little bit, but I'm having a hard time maintaining a focus on them. 
but they got one large claw and they live in these little holes in the mud pretty cool I'm sure there is some viable meat in that one large claw there like I said it's hard to uh, get a good focus on them but I'm gonna tell you what there are plenty of them here See all the little claws stuck up? Pretty cool. And here's that plaque I was talking about that showed some of the history of this area relating to the Pamunkey Indians. A little bit of uh, history about them and their hunting and gathering and the different tools that they would make. This is bushcraft back when bushcraft was every day. There is a king snake that we ran across on the trail. He slithered off the trail and sitting there comfortably. We're going to leave him alone and continue on. Now that is a mushroom. Holy cow, look at the size of that thing. That's my glasses laying there on top of it, just to give you an idea of reference of size. I think Lucky's having a good time today. He enjoys being outside too. Well, we're back home and I got my coffee. And I thought we'd talk just a little bit about what we wanted to sit out and accomplish today. We picked a trail that was a pretty easy to do trail and we know exactly how long it is and how long it took us to walk it with a break. So that gives us an idea of what our distance that we want to cover per day would be. The other thing it was a test of some equipment in our comfort <coughs> level and trying to figure out exactly what do we want to carry on just a day hike. And I know what I carry when I go out on my bushcrafting events and what I do when I go out camping for several days and it always seems to vary a little bit but on just a day hike I'm not really interested in carrying a lot of gear with me but yet I definitely want to carry enough that I've got something with me in the event that I have to spend that unfortunate night out in the woods and it's going to take a little bit of time to figure out exactly what that is but it's going to revolve around the first five C's of survivability. Uh, and most of that is going to be contained just right here in my belt pouch. And that's going to be the bulk of what I'm carrying. Because today with the backpack, with the amount of gear that I was carrying, including the water, which I carried twice as much water as what I needed, plus a stainless steel quart canteen uh, for Lucky for the dog and his fold up water dish, the biggest thing I found between the beginning part of the hike and the latter part of the hike is water weighs a lot. So <laughs> we're going to see how we can vary that a little bit and carry uh, enough water that we're comfortable, but not so much that I come home with half of what I left with. The other thing will be paring down and deciding exactly what I'm going to do as far as carrying a stainless steel container just in case I have to boil water in it. I think what that's going to wind up looking like is maybe those first five C's instead of being in a belt pouch, that may wind up being placed inside of that stainless steel container and then that'll go in the pouch in my camelback. 
and I may continue to wear them on my belt. May have to play with that a little bit in the future. But either way, we're going to work those out on future hikes. We learned a lot today. Thanks for joining me and for coming along with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Took a few snapshots along the way. We'll include those in with this video. And until next time, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. God bless.